All right, guys, we're going to go over the basics, starting with loading your photo or artwork. So when you open the app on your iPad, you're going to end up on the home page. You'll notice there's a load photo icon right in the middle. Click that. It opens up your photos on your tablet. And then from there, you can pick the artwork or the photo reference to generate your stencil. Let's go with a fun Neo Tread design. Now you've loaded your image and you're just going to want to crop out by clicking crop any of the unnecessary background information. In this case, I want to hug it pretty close to the image just to get rid of this filler space. You'll notice on the bottom right corner of the screen, you have two options to either upscale or use HSV conversion for your image. Upscale enhances your photo and sharpens it. This is a really good function for if you have a blurry photo or if you just want to sharpen it just a little more. HSV conversion uses the raw brightness of each individual pixel when doing the conversion to grayscale. This just results in less hard lines and a kind of more ghostly effect for certain images. It excels at converting smooth gradients. It's usually more ideal for artists who prefer a bit of softer value scale stencil as opposed to a more traditional line based stencil. We recommend trying to generate your stencil with HSV conversion on or off and compare the two results. For artwork like this, where it's a little bit more loose, not super refined line work, I'm gonna click upscale. And then I'm gonna click load up on the top right. Now we're at the main function page. This is where you can add steps to enhance your photo a little bit more and get ready for the stencil. I like to always add sharpen first. Here we have the sharpen page. You have a scroll bar at the bottom, it starts at zero, and goes all the way to 100, and it really enhances it. This works really well at almost every stage. It all just depends on what you're looking for in your stencil. I usually like to think about it in 10% increments, and usually end up around 20 or 30. Get the image really sharp, but don't worry, this isn't what the stencil's gonna look like. Then you click Done. After you've sharpened your photo, now we click Stencil. From here, you can adjust your detail and your intensity on your stencil. Keep in mind that each scroll bar directly encourages the other one to alter. With your intensity all the way up, go ahead and lower your detail. Then you'll see it minimize the bulkiness and really sharpen the thin, thin line work in the image. Again, you can go back to intensity, lessen that a little bit, and you'll see a lot less information and noise where you don't need it. In this case, this is a line-based stencil with a little bit of value in there. Pump it up a hair so you can get some darkness and some boldness in some of your line work, but keeping the thin lines nice and light. Play with it until you're happy. Take your time. Each image is different and requires different adjustments. When you feel you're ready to print your stencil, go ahead and click Done up top. Now you're ready to print. Now we're on the print layout page. Some printers will require you to flip your image to a mirror image of itself because it'll print backwards. Every printer is different and will require different things of you. Just know if you have to flip it, it's really easy with one touch. On the print page, you can also darken it just a bit or a lot or scroll up and you can lighten it. Depending how you like your stencil, go ahead and find the right value for you. When you're ready, just click send to printer at the top and you'll have your print options come up. So now just make sure you're printing to the right printer. Double-sided is off and you're ready to print.